I'm Emily Moshek, and you're listening to Tuned Into NoCo, Town Square Media's public affairs show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm joined today with Heather Bonacati of the Food Bank for Larimer County and Stephanie Gauch of Weld Food Bank to talk about Town Square Cares feeding NoCo. So thank you so much for coming in, ladies. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, great. We're excited to be here. Of course. And now it's almost the end of the campaign, so we're going to talk a little bit about wrapping it up. But before we do that, I really just want to focus on the core issue at hand. We here at Town Square have been talking all month about how much of an issue hunger is in northern Colorado, but it can never hurt to be too aware or learn more about it. So from your perspectives at each of your food banks, how do you see hunger affect the community? I think, you know, hunger is one of those issues that when we talk about uh, people are always really surprised about the number of hungry people. And I think in northern Colorado, there's about we collectively serve about 95,000 people annually. So um, people are surprised that it's that large because you can't tell somebody is hungry when you look at them. Um, You just don't know. And so one of the things that I think affects us most and a lot of the donors and advocates we talk to are um, hunger in with our children um, because I think we all agree that no child should ever be hungry. And um, I know in Weld County about 50% of kids struggle um, with hunger and qualify for free and reduced lunch. Um, And that's a ton. I mean, that's half your kids that can't necessarily afford breakfast and lunch and are provided uh, that food through their school. So when we look at the amount of outreach and the amount of programs and food we need to um, really provide in our communities, one of those arbiters of success is looking at how we're impacting those kids and whether or not they have, you know, enough food on their table. Agreed. Hunger is sort of this um, sometimes invisible issue. It's not always front and center. It's not always present. Um, but during the holidays, it it does sort of become more evident. And we want to make sure that everybody has food to eat. It is a basic need. And during the holidays, that's even more important because there is a lot of families who are going without um, and kids and seniors. I just met an individual um, named George allowed me to use his name, but (laughs) he said, uh, you know, I just, I needed something to help me make ends meet at the end of the month. I just, I'm on a really fixed income and don't have enough. And it's those faces, those people um, that you you just might not know are just in need of a little something extra during um, all year, but especially at the holidays when nobody should be hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really fantastic as doing this campaign we had the chance to go to the food banks and volunteer and I was able to go and interview some of the clients there and it was so amazing to learn their stories and but it was also really heartbreaking and surprising how mm-hmm. many people truly do need it and that's why when we kind of were going off of this campaign we were like 10,000 hungry families need a holiday meal we want to be able to get that for them and so that's why we came up with the town square cares right. feeding no co $25 to feed a family and now our listeners have been listening to this all month. They've heard all about it. We have, Thank you. Yes, we have yes. not let them forget it. But let's hear it from the other end. How would you describe the Feeding No Co campaign and what you've seen it do over the month of November? I mean, I really – I. I think it's just an awesome example of the power of community coming together. So, you know, you guys have been so great to help spread that message and be awesome advocates for hunger and let the community know about the pervasiveness of the issue. You know, and on our end, we get to see, um, you know, how all that education and the donations that people are subsequently making to support our efforts, we get to see it in play. And we get to talk to those moms who, you know, are struggling right now, who don't know if they're going to be able to provide a Thanksgiving meal or Christmas meal or gifts for their kids. And and we get to know when, when we give out those baskets that, yes, you know, this is one less thing that you have to worry about. You know, you can focus your time on, you know, your other bills or just you know, those Christmas gifts or just have one meal where you sit down and you don't worry about where it comes from. And, you know, you're able to spend that time together as a family. I think when we reflect on the holidays, we all think about, yeah, we sit down and we eat and it's, but it's not just the food, it's the family, it's getting together. It's all those good feelings that come with that. And, you know, that's what 
all of your listeners and you guys are helping provide to people is that great feeling of sitting down together and having that family and friend time and really being able to reflect on what you're grateful for and not have to worry about, you know, is there going to be food on my table tomorrow? And it just takes a few people who care. You guys came together, saw a need, uh, reached out and did everything you guys possibly could to help feed so many in our community. And we are truly grateful for that. Uh, You have helped countless families and individuals. And um, like Steph said, just knowing that they're going to have a Thanksgiving meal, um, that's really important. And I think that's something that a lot of us just comes Take for granted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know it's it's going to be there. And a lot of people don't. So um, we're really appreciative of your efforts and all of the listeners and everybody who donates Um, to this campaign because it is really making a remarkable difference. You know, it might just be you're texting to give or you're calling, you're going to the website and making a donation and you don't get to see sort of that end user. Um, But really every time somebody has donated, they are personally helping a family, a senior, a child, somebody have something to eat. And, you know, it really is a testament of what the community can do when we come together. I know. And thanks to all this, we have been able to feed over 100 families in NOCO so far. Yes. I'm so excited about that. And I want to thank our listeners so much for their generosity. Absolutely. It's amazing. You guys are amazing. Yeah. (laughs) A huge thank you from all of us and everybody we serve. But kind of going off of what you're talking about, you know, it's not just a quick text. There is an endpoint. Would you be able to describe that in a little more detail? What does it look like once these families are able to receive that meal? I think once it's more than just a holiday meal for a lot of our individuals and families. It's more than just this turkey on the table. That's the that represents a lot. But for our families, hunger knows no season. It goes on all year long. It can impact them at any given time. It could be, um, you know, somebody had a medical issue. It could be that senior that I mentioned that's on a fixed income. It could be somebody who um, is in a a tough marriage. And we don't know the background, but we know that there's a lot of people from a variety of backgrounds who need help at given times. And so, yeah, it is um, sort of faceless, if you will. You're giving that donation. You may not see who's ultimately getting it. Um, But there are so many in our community who it could be your neighbor, it could be your kid's teacher, it could be your the assistant at your dental office. Um, So many um, families and people who are working or who are trying to, you know, keep up with the cost of housing in this area. A lot of things drive people to um, wanting us to help them. So Mm -hmm. you are you are making a difference in somebody's life. Now, you mentioned how many people it's affecting in our community mm-hmm. and not naming names, but do you have any people in particular that have really stuck out to you over the years or over the holiday season since you've been working at the food banks? I There was a story last summer. Um, we do lunchtime hot meals during the summertime for summer feeding because we know kids are more susceptible to hunger when school is not in session. And um, so we do our best to provide those lunchtime meals. And we have a awesome volunteer down in Decono in South Weld County, and he's been serving those meals for a decade or more. And he told me a story this past year where he had a child that came on Monday and got food. And it's a kid that comes every day and, um, you know, just regular eight-year-old boy. And uh, he didn't see him again until Thursday. And when the kid came back on Thursday, Stan asked him, you know, where you been? What you been up to? And the kid kind of shrugged and, you know, nothing, nothing. Got some food, sat down and ate, came back up for seconds. And that's when he told Stan that he had not eaten since he had been there on Monday. And, you know, I mean, there's no reason or excuse or any, there's no eight-year-old boy should ever go hungry in our community ever. I mean, there's no reason for it. There's plenty of food. There's plenty of resources. So, you know, what you guys are helping us do here is make sure the community is aware of the issues like this and helping us, you know, connect the resources and wealth that we have in this community to, you know, provide that food directly to those people in need. But I mean, that story just sticks with me because it's heartbreaking. Nobody would ever think there might be a kid out there in Welder, Larimer County, who's gone three days without eating. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's unacceptable. 
funny. Our stories are very similar. <laughs> Stephanie and I are both moms, and we've both been with our food banks for a long time. So we've seen a lot of different um, people come through and heard a lot of stories, but the ones that that stick with you that really resonate um, similar to Stephanie's story. I had a mom and a small child come in um, one day, and they were just asking about our programs and services and what we provide. And uh, I was, I had just had my first son um, about the time that this happened. And uh, the little boy looked up and tugged on his mom's sleeve and said, Mom, is the day today, is today the day? Do we get to eat food today? <laughs> And I burst into tears in the front of our office. That story still hits me um, because it was so (laughs) powerful because I could not imagine having to tell my kiddo that we didn't have food, that there just wasn't something that he could eat. It's just not okay. Definitely not, which is why we're so grateful to our listeners and to the food banks for being able to do what you do to help these people. I know, obviously, as we talked about, the holidays aren't the only time that people are hungry. Right. Yes, you guys are operating year-round. For those who would like to continue supporting and helping out the food banks after feeding NOCO, how can they do that? I think, you know, there's so many ways that you can give back um, and help support the fight against hunger. And probably um, one of the easiest ways is through volunteering. I know that we both rely very heavily on volunteers to be able to get the amount of work that we get done um, with the least amount of expenses possible. And that's through the the um, offering of people's time. So I know that's something we both accept, um, as well as, of course, the financial donations. Like you mentioned, hunger is not just a Thanksgiving and Christmas issue. It is the time of year when a lot of people think about hunger. Um, But really, it is year long. And um, it never goes away because there are people who will always have a crisis situation. Folks will always lose a job. Somebody will always have a medical emergency, you know. And so um, we can use those donations year round. And then, of course, food. Um, where We always accept food donations. That food goes right out to our food pantries and soup kitchens that help serve um, all of northern Colorado. So there's three really w- easy ways for folks to get involved. And, and And hopefully there's one of those that fits everyone. There's always a way to get involved, no matter how old, how young you are, how much you work, how Mm -hmm. um, there's, you can come volunteer your time. You can volunteer your thoughts. um, You can volunteer, you know, if you see a way to do something better, let us know. Um, Folks like you guys that are helping run this awesome campaign, things like this are really helpful to us. And this is, there's many ways to be involved. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think one thing that we don't, always talk about is just the power of um of your words like now you guys know all about how prevalent the issue of hunger is so if you go have a beer tonight or go home to have dinner with your family and you can say oh my gosh did you know you know that one in four kids do not have enough to eat or you know and just helping us get that word out i think is probably the easiest thing that anyone could do is is letting people know that this is a big issue in our community, even though you might not know it's there, you might not see it on a daily basis. Definitely. I've learned so much since we've started (laughs) this campaign for real, and especially even just going and being able to volunteer. It was really eye-opening just to be able to see not only how many people are in need, which is heartbreaking, but it was also heartwarming to see how many people in our community really do come together to help these people out. And that, I think, is, I mean, at least for me personally, what makes the holiday time so special and profound and amazing is... I mean, we do get to do a lot of good and we do get to provide that food into the community. But selfishly for me, I get to see everybody in the community and how much they care and how much they want to get involved and how much they want to give and they just want to know how. And it just feels amazing that we live in a community where people are so giving and you get to see that on a daily basis, you know, with folks giving up their time and food and money and and all of those awesome things. It is. This is a really giving community. There are so many people here with big hearts and um, just want to help. And we are truly fortunate to be able to live in a community where people want to support one another and absolutely appreciate that (laughs) absolutely and you know I think people sometimes feel like oh I I shouldn't do anything unless I can do it big unless I could make this hundred dollar or thousand dollar donation I have I have a wonderful um, older lady who sends one dollar a month and she's on a fixed income and that's what she can afford and 
she's given back because that $1 to her probably means more than that $10 or $100 or $1,000 from somebody else. I mm-hmm. mean, it is clear that that this is a big donation for her. And I look at it just as just as amazing and big and powerful as any other donation that would come in. So nobody should ever feel like what they're doing might be too small. Every every penny counts. Definitely. Well, again, thank you to you ladies and to all of our listeners that donated. There's still a few left. Yay. We have until November 27th. So text NOCO25 to 50155 or visit feednoco.org. If you'd like to donate and thank you again, Heather and Stephanie, not only for coming in today, but for working with us so much on this campaign. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the listeners for everything that you're doing to help fight hunger. We really appreciate it. And so do every single person we provide food to. Again, that was Heather Bonacati from the Food Bank for Larimer County and Stephanie Gauch from Weld Food Bank. Thank you to all who have donated. If you would like to still donate, there's a few days left in the fundraiser. Text NOCO25 to 50155 or visit feednoco.org.